Hey, welcome to the episode of Beers, Jack of Barbecue. Check out the improvements Life Do made to their U Rod portable camping grill. Hey, I'm Craig, man behind the cameras, Jack. Life Do gave us another grill, which is pretty awesome. So they did a U Rod grill, uh, which made a galvanized steel. Uh, we saw some paint come off, and there's some things that weren't quite right with it. Not that it was a bad thing in any way, just improvements that could be made. Then they came, gave us a flow fire to use, which some of those improvements were on that. Some of the stainless steel, and they had uh, three millimeter stainless, 201 stainless on the outsides, and I'm sorry, three uh, millimeter stainless on the outside and two millimeter on the, the panels. We had a little bit of bowing, so they're actually changing that going forward to three millimeters for the side. Well, then they also just, they already have improvements for the U-Rod, which I'll show you here in the box here in a, in a little bit, and I'll actually compare it to the other one that we had from before to show you the improvements that they made. So uh, when we come back, put it together, show you the differences. All right, so I unboxed it so you don't have to watch the painfulness of me going through that, but um, a couple things right away. First of all, it's the bottom tray is kind of the same, but the bottom grate before was just a regular rack like the cooking rack was to hold the charcoal or the, or the firewood or whatever you're going to use, but this thing's now stainless steel, so that's kind of really nice. Um, again, the sides, as we said before, these are all three, um, three millimeter, 201 stainless. The grill itself is about a pound and a half lighter than the previous one. So that's kind of nice. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of lay them on the ground here. This is what I did before. I think was the easiest way for me to put it together. And we'll go to the wide configuration. There we are. And this just goes into whatever configuration you have at the bottom. The rack goes on top. I just noticed I actually have extra things here to move this rack around. That's kind of cool. And these go on top to hold um, maybe a, a underneath this to do a, a pot on here. Or you saw us, if you watched our first video we did it, we did a cast iron pan that we cooked on. Kind of cool. So let me show you the comparisons then. Bring it right back. All right, so here they are side by side. Galvanized steel, 2-1 stainless. Um, again, can't tell the thickness of the size, but this one's actually a little bit, sets a little bit higher, but the capacity of the grill itself is, is the same. Um, the grade itself looks to be the same, um, like I said, but just kind of nice improvements. The, the, one of the nice things, like I said, well, these grills seem the same, the same, gal, the same pan on the bottom to catch the ash, which is kind of nice. The nice thing is these bars before just slid, and anything you're doing, you're worried about coming out. These don't move. And they actually have different bars if you do the other configuration, which was a smaller configuration. So that's kind of nice right away. The other thing I, I mentioned right away before was the grate on the bottom. There's the difference, you know, regular rack. And this is now stainless. That's, that's kind of really nice as far as that goes. Um, but those are the biggest advantages and this one again had the gal the coating on the galvanized steel it peeled as it, it heated up um, we're expecting when we heat this one up everything's gonna be fine with it gonna be no issues um, this one does show a little bit of rust once that came off but not a huge deal it's a grill you know you're cooking with it so that's where you're doing it with it so they're kind of the big difference again this one's about a pound and a half lighter <clears throat> than this one is but again cooking space everything seems to be about the same so uh, we're gonna light this one up gonna cook some food on it tonight show you how it does all right, so I didn't even mention what we're cooking on this, but um, we've got a nice tri-tip going on here. This is just from White's Markets, but it's getting local to us. Got a tri-tip. It's a smaller one. I figured a small one would try it on this portable grill. Um, I actually use Porter Road Smoke. This is something I think new they're doing, but I figured to give it a try. It's like they suckered you in when you're checking out to throw that in your cart while you're there. So I actually had the grate set up to the back side here, and all I'm going to do is throw this on the back, more towards the back. Just to let it start warming up. Leave it on there a few minutes. Come back and turn it 
just like I said, see what it does. I got the coals actually banked. I got probably a lot of coals over here, which is, should be hot near the end for the sear. And I got them kind of thinned out over here, trying to do almost like an indirect, direct type thing with this grill. So we'll bring it back when we go to flip this thing. All right, so what I basically did was I just kind of moved it, moved it over here a little bit as, not on camera, just to kind of show you what we were doing. It's starting to get some searing, so kind of nice. You can kind of move this around. These gloves are awesome for doing this. So, well, we got a little bit of a hard sear going on there. That's what's created with doing this grill. But uh, we'll get a little bit on this side. I'll probably move it over to where the coals aren't as hot yet. And then we'll see what we can salvage them. But that's going to be fine. That's going to be a good hard sear. All right. So I uh, also realized that the part that kind of looks a little charred there is um, where the fat was. I actually put the fat, cap, the fat side down. So that's actually what kind of took off on us there. The rest has been working out fine. So I just kind of moved it over. This back side wasn't getting as much heat. So just trying to do it evenly across the thing and see when we get to a point where I don't think we even need to really see this thing because the charcoal is doing the job for us right now. So... Uh, We'll keep it going until it gets about 120 maybe at the most, or 115, and we're going to pull it off. All right, so I'm just going to do, again, a little flipping. This baby's charring up on us. Um, I have to see how this flavor goes for us. But see what happens. Again, the fat side on that side, this kind of is nice and crusty. Don't know if it went too far there, but uh, again, we're going to learn on this one. All right, what I didn't show you, I've actually moved the coals around a little bit to give myself a little area where I can put this thing so it doesn't want to take off on me. It's doing okay. Like I said, this backside is further than I like it, but it's going to be a learning experience on this one for sure. All right, just going to, again, move it around a little bit. It's not looking too bad. I mean, like I said, we got a little crispier than I would prefer. I'm trying to get this tip a little bit more here on the on the one side. So bring it over here. Just let it keep warming up here. Um, grill is working fantastic. Can't say it so much for the guy grilling on right now, but probably my first mistake is trying to do a big fat two-inch steak on a little portable grill, but you don't know until you try it, right? All right, got a little flame happening here on this little end, so I just want to kind of move that over just so it can maintain heat but not burn it. So. All right, so I think we're going to pull it off now. I just was doing some readings here. So we're like 117. It's dropping a little bit yet. But when that carries over, that's going to be in the 120s to 125. So I think that's going to be where we want it. Like I said, there's parts that are darker than I like. But you never know. Might like that flavor. We'll see what happens during the taste test. As always, cheers. Here we are into the cook. Did a tri-tip, struggled greatly with it because the fire, like I said, just runs hot. It's a portable grill. You don't have a lot of room to move things around. So my mistake probably trying to do, like, even though it was a small tri-tip, it was like just uh, about two pounds, I want to say it was, um, still didn't have space. But I, at one point, I moved the coals away, and that's the way I probably should have started with it. I had a little bit of banking in the bottom, but who knows? We'll see what it looks like when I cut it. First, I want to talk about this grill. So all the improvements they made over the last one with the galvanized steel and the paint coming off and then we showed the flow fire with the two mil sides that were kind of bowing. No bowings happening here on this one here. Working out perfectly. The improvements they made, I was able to move this rack around as you saw, um, which is really nice. Kind of gives you that extra spaces to, to try to put things and still keep everything very compact. A um, Couple things too. Hopefully you stayed around long enough to watch this, but we're gonna have a coupon code they're going to give you 30% off this grill. So we'll have that on our on the show more and I'll have it I'll probably tie, you know put a comment in there and pin it so it's right there. And the other thing is we're about to hit 5,000 subs, so we're going to give one of these away. So I should say subscribe to the channel, click the bell like notifications and you'll see when we kind of announce that we're going to do a giveaway. So I'll wait to hit 5,000 I'm assuming right now it's September, it's a little warm for September. In the next month we're going to hit that goal, uh, which is kind of cool. And thanks to everybody out there for getting us there. But we're going to give one away, probably some other things as well. We'll have to figure that out as we get closer to that point. So, like I said, small tri-tip. I hit it with this Port Road, something new they had when I ordered some meat from them. Like I said, they kind of caught me at the end with the add to the cart thing. I figured I'd try it. It actually smelled really good. It smelled peppery, so I like that. This thing's kind of running a little bit different angles here. i got to watch my hands here with this thing, but try to get one this way. Like I said, don't know what the crust did. 
because I was getting a little hard on it. Got a little, that's almost rare in the center there, but that's okay for us. So get a nice little sliver. I'm actually going to try that piece out that I showed you there. See what that crust is like. Actually, don't taste any crisp, any burntness at all, which is nice. Almost kind of say I did a Pittsburgh rare without even trying. But um, like I said, I wasn't trying to do that exactly. I was trying to get it right. I did hard to read some temperatures. Like I said, that's probably around 115 there. Um, we did pull it when I was getting 115, 118 readings. So um, got not going to be a problem for us to eat this though. But hopefully, like we're seeing, subscribe to the channel, find out when we do the giveaway, and we'll see you next time.